Welcome back to the Overboard DM. My name's Cujo and I go overboard on everything Dungeons and Dragons so that you don't have to. And today I have Wave 12 here for you from Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. I've got Grandma here for scale. I'm going to run through these real quick. And you know in my videos I like to show you some comparison to some other miniatures. Whether they be from uh, WizKids line or maybe some other lines that I particularly like to use. Um, so I'll kind of like throw them on the table, show, show them off, and we'll talk a little bit about them and we'll try to run through this really quick. Just to let you see what you're getting and know the scale and uh, let's go. Um, let's go into some flumps from this uh, wave. Uh, now I bought two sets. Uh, you know, why did I buy two sets? Because you know you got to have a lot of flumps. Um, if you're gonna have flumps in the game, you can have one, but you you know you you, you probably got to have you know at least six. <laughs> uh, there's some pre-painted miniatures right there um, from a, an earlier uh, expansion that they came out with. Um, you notice that they are a little bit smaller, so um, you know there you go. Uh, you're not gonna get that clear translucent translucent look uh, of the originals um, but I'm sure you can come kind of kind of get a, a cool spooky vibe um, I, I just envision these guys uh, having them all over the place and you're trying to walk through some kind of a, a cavern deep cavern situation so there's our flumps and you can get an, get a couple more while you're at it so let's go into some Grex. On this blister pack, you get two Grex. Um, you know, with the f just like with the flumps, they didn't have any miniatures for those. So it's really cool that we're getting miniatures for creatures that we didn't, never had, or have you know, or you had to make yourself. Um, and these Grex here, um, there there was some miniatures that came out. I've only got one of them. Um, there, there are probably some uh, some other ones, of course, but uh, that's one of the ones I stumbled upon um, from uh, one of the pre-painted lines. Uh, very flat <laughs> profile. Uh, these two here are are great. You know, of course, so you you have to go out and get that second blister pack because you're gonna have more Grex. You know, <laughs> where, where there's one, there's 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 more. It's, they're like cockroaches. You know, you gotta have you know, maybe there's some flumps too. You know, you just, they're all over the place. Everything, you know, just got to have lots and lots of creatures flooding your your dungeons, guys. But these Grex are really, really cool. Um, I knew from the blister pack, from the picture, that I was going to want a couple of these. They're they're great looking. Uh, these Alpha Grex are, uh, are really nice as well. All right, so... All right, sorry, Grandma. That was kind of scary, wasn't it? Let's go into another miniature that has just come out for a a non-painted version. They do have a pre-paint of this. I don't have the pre-paint. Um, and there's a there's some miniatures from like Reaper and um, some other maybe companies that kind of tried to make it without without license. But you here have an official Nelfishne, Um that you know looks really great and you can paint them up yourself and you can get them for cheap um, I know that the pre-painted ones they go for such high dollar because you can't get them any other way um, so now we have a super affordable price to collect all the monsters in the monster manual because that's what you got to do and in Volo's guide and everything you know Xanathar's guide to everything and and every other monster manual that comes out so anyway he's a, a great looking Great looking miniature, um, exactly like the the art. All right, let's go into lizard folk. Now this is like more of a common thing. I and, and, I, and I forgot to mention in the beginning of this video that I'm more concentrating now on when these waves come out to just get the monsters and the the villains. Um, trying to stay away from the NPCs, player character types. I've got so many of those, and they really go unpainted. Um, I paint up the character, player characters that need it, 
Um, I paint a, paint up a few NPCs and then that's it. And I'm going more toward. I got to get my monsters painted. Um, I, this is the lizard folks I use. Now, yeah, they're not D and D. Um, I love the look of these. These are Warhammer. Um, if you're not familiar, I painted them up the blue that they actually kind of are on the box, but I liked them blue. Lizard folk can be any color you want, pretty much in D and D. Um, I did like that theme. Um, it's really cool. Um, I did get this blister pack because it comes with that that uh, lizard folk shaman. And you can see that the resemblances are still good and the scale is still good and that he could still be painted up and fit in that same tribe. Um, the other guy there even has a shield similar to the shield that uh, the Warhammer one carries. Um, he's got a spear. I just happened to grab one that's a sp with a spear out of my collection. I, you know, of course, I've got some with some swords. I got some riding some uh, some uh, little uh, cold ones or in D and D terms, I guess it'd be like raptors. But anyway, a couple great lizard men. Lizard men uh, figures are out there, but they're kind of you know in metal and maybe Reaper's got some and depends on if you like the sculpts or not. But these are. Are pretty cool. I I prefer the Warhammer ones. You get a big box. You get some skinks. I use those as fire newts. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. All right. So moving on to the next. Let's do this one where we've seen many many knolls right in our in our days. And there are a lot of good looking knolls out there. Here's two more. Um, See the name of these. You got a knoll and a knoll gnawler. So I'm pretty sure the gnawler might be the one with the two daggers. I don't know. Maybe you know. Um, but for comparison, let's bring out. Uh, we got some of these knolls here that came out. These are some, uh, some special ones. They're. Uh, well, this one just as a pack leader. But you, just so you can see how they fit in. These are the, uh, the whiz kids pre-painted. Let's bring in. Um, this is a an earlier one. Here's a Reaper. Um, here's another Reaper. There's another Reaper. I'm trying to make sure you can compare the two new ones, just to see how the, the pack fits in. I got an old metal. Um, not sure. I got another old metal one here. That uh pretty much painted up um, you can see how all the different lines just kinda go together whether there be an old metal miniature or the new pre paints or the brand new unpainted um, I'm just throwing some more out there these are more from WizKids um, yeah and you can't have too many knolls right come on get get more knolls Buy more flumps, buy more gricks. Get a box of lizard men. Come on. You gotta have you gotta be able to flood your dungeons and your ca caverns with some creatures. I mean people people are trying to survive down there and it's a it's a rough world, you know? Alright, so let's get into another another cool sculpt these are not made either you can't find these unless you get some pre-painted versions um, they're kind of washing out with the light I hope, I hope this is going to be good in the uh, post here I have to check it out hopefully it's alright uh, let me bring out one of the pre-painted versions I happen to have of a Shohagen or Sohugen Sohagen Hagen does um, basically like a fish people um, yeah I think they they look great um, lights down and change some, some of my settings here because I didn't like how it was looking a little bit washed out um, the, that, the white miniatures anyway so yeah these Schwagen um, are really cool um, I don't I, I already improvised again I went with uh, hordes minis I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bring them all out, but uh, I haven't got them all painted. They're just uh, I 
based and I started blocking them in. Um, I have a shaman there, shaman, and uh, another one. Now they're called something else, of course, in hordes. Um, they're uh, I forget the name, but um, you can get a box of those guys, and it's not that expensive when you break it down per miniature. Um, and the fact that you couldn't get Shawagan miniatures anywhere. Um, and they look kind of the fishy like. You could probably use them for troglodytes if you really wanted to. I really wanted to use them for Shawagan because, I mean, I didn't have any miniatures. But again, now Whiskit has two. You can get this blister pack, right? Well, no, you just got two. You, know, you need more. <laughs> you need more. I only bought two because I didn't want them all to be samey and then buy like two or three or four bl blister packs of these particular guys. Um, when you get a, a box of uh, some uh, the, the Hordes miniatures, you're going to get a little bit more variety and you're going to have some different looking miniatures. And I have already used them in a campaign because even though they're not finished painted, it came up and they had to come out and fight. Uh, so yeah, the Schwagen are excellent. Excellent. And now I'm going to bring out um, some miniatures that I put, made a video on already. Uh, these are the Bullywogs that I use also from Hordes. I'm going to stay in the Hordes theme. Um, and I'm going to bring out the new Bullywogs from WizKids line. Now these look great they look like the card art I'm not really a big fan of the card art they look like nice little frogs I do love the jumping scene coming out of the water that's excellent I mean that, that's really cool he, I've, he's looking like he's mean he might hit somebody you know pretty hard um, but you know obviously if you look at the contrast of the what I use for a bully wog they look mean ornery the big old throats and all the detail they got. I mean, they look like they're living out in the wild where the other guys look like, you know, a frog picked up a sword and put a little something to cover his, uh, his junk. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, yeah, they're, they're great looking. And if you don't have, if you don't want to go out and try to buy some hordes miniatures, I understand, you know, they're metal, um, high detail, but you know, the cost, you know, versus reward, you know, do you want to spend the money on it? But these uh, these guys are not bad. But again, you know, there's only two now, so you if you wanted a bunch of them, which you you should have, you should always have a bunch. These are horde miniatures that not you know like you're gonna run into a bunch. They're like goblins and orcs, and I don't want them to be samey. I don't want to buy a blister pack ten times and uh, be real samey on certain on certain characters. Now this is a nightmare. Now this is going to be fun. <laughs> uh, I'm not having great success painting my clear miniatures. Um, you know, I've done some, used, used some inks and some uh, washes and stuff, uh, mostly inks for the most part, trying to get the right consistency to not to make it look good and still be transparent. Um, I'm torn between if I like it or don't like it. I'm just having a hard time myself. I need to watch some tutorials uh, on how to paint clear miniatures better. Um, but anyway, it's a great looking sculpt. I'm sure it'll look great once we get this nightmare painted up. Um, and we have a black pudding which we can put a miniature in. And she's on a, a decent size 25 mil base, which is probably just a little extra large, um, so I've got a little fancy base. Um, but that's that's awesome. I mean, you, how can you not ask for a black pudding that you can actually put a figure in? You know, uh, really, really cool miniature. I'm glad I had it. Now I probably could have bought a second one of those. I think I have a black pudding um, floating around somewhere in my collection, but it doesn't. It's not like this one where you can actually put a miniature in it, which is uh really special I like it I like it a lot <laughs> and then uh, we've got the roper now, I don't have a roper this is a pretty good one too um, I didn't get any of the pre-painted stuff from a long time ago so you may already have one of these you know, I don't and for uh, forget how much this one guy is four dollars five dollars or whatever it is 
Um, he does come by himself. All the larger miniatures definitely come by themselves. Um, but the Roper is really cool. Um, and some of them don't look that great. I know Reapers made some and other companies maybe have touched on them a little bit or have their iterations of them. Um, this guy is pretty cool. I like this one. The sculpt. And moving on, let's go to the Cloaker. Went with a Roper. Now we're going to go with the Cloaker. Now, I don't have one of these miniatures either. Um, crazy looking, <laughs> floating, flying Stingray. Um, I did start to use a Pathfinder um, miniature that they came out a while ago with. I started painting them and hadn't quite finished them. Uh, I thought I was going to need them. I do that a lot. You'll see that in all my videos. It's either not painted at all or halfway painted. Rarely fully painted. Um, but I was going to use them as a cloaker because you can't get cloaker miniatures. I'm going to say that a lot in this wave. You you can't just run out to the store and get some uh, official looking cloaker miniatures. And, and obviously to scale. I didn't even know that the Pathfinder like one was that different. It was not even close to the same scale. So yeah, he's not a cloaker anymore. He's like a bat. He's like a he's a vampire bat from now on. Get out of here. Get out of here. So yeah, that cloaker uh, is really cool. I've seen these painted up. Um, a lot of fun. Can't wait to get that done. And I'm gonna bring out a manticore from a different video. Uh, this is the one that comes with the the special um, Joe Manganello pack. Uh, this is his personal Manticore. Um, well, in this set, Grandma, move over. You get a Manticore, right? So, and I thought when I first seen him, I opened, looked at the package. I'm like, oh, it's the same exact sculpt. Well, that's unfortunate, you know. But oh well. I mean more manticores you need lots of manticores right <laughs> not really you don't want too many manticores because that's a epic beast um, but I have two perfect I don't think you want any more than that and I have a different sculpt but they're the same they're, you know you can tell that they're definitely manticores from D&D &D, not a different version of a manticore from a different company so great looking sculpt I love the the hand the other one's more of a just chilling pose and this one's gonna attack with his tail and everything. Really cool sculpt. Definitely worth it. Definitely. All right. And again, like I said, another miniature that's you can't just run out and buy. And if you do, you're gonna go to like Reaper or something like that, and then it's gonna be their version of it um, for copyright issues. But I think the Reaper one's probably pretty good. Uh, in this case, but I, I've never bought one. And finally, we have a Hook Horror for D&D &D official, and it's great. I mean, I was wanting them to do this kind of stuff, come out with things that we can't, we don't have access to, or we have to go to different sources to find. Um, if you want the official look right out of the book, something, something feels good about that. I don't know about you, but I just really like it to be Unless I don't like the artwork, and that's not very, it's very, very rare. I'm looking at you, Bullywugs. Yeah, <laughs> um, but here's your hook horror, is great, great miniature, definitely recommend it. Uh, let's get into a griffin. Now, this griffin is what they call it a diving griffin, and that's pretty much what he's doing. He's gonna pounce on grandma. Um, he's not social distancing, he's coming right in to chomp on grandma's head. Um, I do have their other griffin, which is kind of weird they did come out with another griffin already. Um, I got him pretty much painted up. Uh, I think it's about finished. Could, I'm not the best. I could probably get a little, you know, get a little more work on that one. But uh, yeah, I, two griffins, two different poses. You can't have enough griffins, people. Come on. Go out there and buy 10 griffins. I mean, well, when the griffins swarm you, hey, you're getting hit by a bunch of griffins. We need more monsters <laughs> in our D&D &D campaigns. You need multiple monsters, not just one. Oh, you see a griffin. No, you see 10 griffins. 
right? You see 10. What do you do? You run, right? <laughs> no, you can't run from griffins. They'll get you. All right. Another miniature, guys, that you can't get anywhere. Matter of fact, this one's high dollar. If you get the pre-painted version that they don't sell anymore or, or you have to try to find in some kind of old box and hopefully you pull them. Not that you need it. It's not, like, oh my gosh, I can't play D&D &D without a bone naga. Um, but I want one and now I got one. Uh, and it's cheap and they make them. And they're gonna, you can go buy another one and, you know, two days later and go, I don't know if you need lots of bone nagas, but I'm not against it. You know, Sounds actually pretty cool now that I think about it. A lot of bone nagas coming at you. Uh, TPK maybe? Let me see. Alright, getting close to the end, guys. We have a... What is this? We're, we're big on giant stuff, right? Giant this, giant that. And this is a giant spider with egg clutch. Uh, another unique different look to a spider it's not excuse me it's not uh, a phase spider which is very clear what that you know when you see phase spiders the coloring and the the body size and all that um, you know whiz kids came out with just um, a little pack of three spiders uh, just got one here to show you sitting on a little web there someone bleeding out they do have a spider from one of their old uh, board games, uh, pre-painted. So you can see the size um, and, and the look. It's a little bit different. It's definitely not a phase spider. Um, and and I'm gonna, I think I'm repeating myself a lot here, guys. You can't have enough spiders. I don't. I've never dropped spiders on my crew and said, "Hey, you, there, there's a spider coming at you." Or there's a spider in that web. No, there's spiders. And then next round, guess what? There's more spiders coming. And then guess what? Big daddy, mommy spider, whatever, comes over this wall or down this tree. And now it's about to get real. So um, you can't you can't have enough spiders. And if you don't have a large one like that uh, with some egg clusters, uh, I don't know what you're, you're doing. It wrong. You're doing doing you're doing D and D wrong. Is what you're, what you're doing. <laughs> All right, and we have a Gorgon again. You know how many Gorgons are out there? I don't know. Maybe you can find a bull miniature. I d I don't have a Gorgon miniature. I know that Dwarven Forge. You know, if you watch my uh, other videos, I, I recommend that you watch all my videos. I do uh, uh, a lot of Dwarven Forge, and I know they make a, a cool Gorgon. But I don't have that set that it came in. Um, I'm not really a huge fan of all their miniatures, but I was looking forward to having a Gorgon, and now I've got one. Um, if you don't know, they turn you to stone. You probably don't want to have more than one Gorgon, <laughs> unless you're really, really, really evil. I'm looking at you, hate. Don't do it. Don't have, don't have more than one Gorgon. All right. All right, Grandma. What do we got for you? We have a ogre zombie. I know what you're doing. You're looking at it going, man, it looks just like a regular ogre. Look at that stomach. Look at this, the gashes on the front. Yeah, he could have just been an ogre that's had a hard battle. Maybe. Um, I don't, you know, from the back, he, he, I guess it's going to be depending on how you paint him. You can all obviously put some more cuts in them if you want more of that look more torn um, if, if you really just need some more ogre models because ogres are actually hard to come by and I'm about to show you some cool comparisons with ogres as far as trying to find good ogre miniatures now you could green stuff that stomach up so his insides aren't showing and boom you got yourself a nice ogre miniature that's official size and look right there and I don't know. I feel like ogres should be more common, especially in the early stages. Um, so here's one of my only other official ogre miniatures that came in one of these monster blister packs that you can get. Um, and I thought that's a great looking ogre. That's what I expect them to look like. And I like the sculpt, and it's really cool. And you can tell that they are similar. Um, 
And I, I would be half tempted to just patch that stomach up myself and boom, I got another cool ogre miniature. Um, just for some comparisons, I got some Reaper here. Um, these guys I just primed uh, a flesh color I was gonna go with, but obviously now I would definitely go with more of a green um, or muted green or whatever you want to call that. Um, but uh, these are the ogres. You can see they're a little bit smaller size. They do have a similar look but they're a little bit smaller size, which is not too bad. Um, that's what I was about to go with because I didn't have any ogre miniatures. I mean, I just, and I, and I wanted some. Now, what I did, I'm going to take a couple of these guys out because they take up too much room here. And this is for the longest time back in the day. If you don't know what this miniature is, it's a Warhammer miniature uh, from Warhammer Fantasy. Metal, ba uh, metal square base it's the you know a real deal there uh, i didn't play warmer fantasy but i bought this as an ogre even back when i was playing uh hero quest and went into warhammer quest and when i started dnd &D, i mean he's i got a couple more but one's a flag bearer and one's a horn blowing uh ogre but i used them as ogres because i wanted good ogre miniatures and they still re really didn't exist um, so I've used him for the longest time, even though he's got two heads. I'm like, just ignore that he has two heads. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, um, and I have one more just to show you. I don't even know what to do with this particular ogre. Um, it's an undead ogre, but he's been fully armored, which is, it's Reaper. I'm not sure where they were going with him. Mean, if you got your own fantasy setting, you can do whatever you want, but in... D and D, I would say, okay, well, it's undead ogre that someone pinned down and suited up <laughs> with armor, and or is it magically? Okay, there we go. Just it's magically um, animated, and so now it, he, they can control it. So, okay, so we have an idea what we can do with him, but uh, yeah, not your typical regular ogre. So I've got one last miniature to show you guys. Um, I saved them for last. I'm gonna have to drop my uh, my base right here, real quick. It's a, it's a little bit big, so trust me, he will fill up that screen here if I did this right. Yep, that's a giant ape. Now let me uh, bring out my comparison to my other giant ape miniatures. Um, no, no. No, get him out of here. <laughs> I don't have any giant ape miniatures to compare it to. Um, I think I've got a little, couple little tiny regular ape size miniatures. Um, but come on, this is like almost King Kong if you compare them to the size. It is huge. I mean, I thought it was like way more than giant. <laughs> like when I think giant, I'm thinking you know two times as big as a ape. Um, I mean, he feels like three to four times so uh, excellent miniature I mean wow it's gonna be probably easy to paint too I think the bigger miniatures I, I like having fun with because you don't have all the little tiny uh, intricate little tiny brush strokes um, but yeah he's gonna be fun uh, great miniature if you if you got a shape changers in your group or you just you're in the jungles of Cholt and you want a giant ape wow this is a, a great miniature to get and that is going to wrap it up guys thank you for watching if you made it to the end you've seen the giant ape you're, you know you're satisfied you can you can rest at night um, in the in the upper left corner here of my screen you'll see our uh, tabletop dungeoneers miniature that we created as a team I didn't create it I just painted it and I modified mine yeah it's got it's got LEDs maybe I'll show that in another video um, I'm going to try to showcase him in most of my video videos if I can. Uh, it's just a good group of guys over at Discord and ladies. And uh, we're just a bunch of young YouTubers starting off and, you know, just trying to uh, support each other. You know, you're welcome to come over, talk with us. You can talk with a bunch of young YouTubers that are, are interested in your feedback and want to do better and want to create content that you're interested in. And we range from not just D&D, &D, but anything in the hobby world. So come check us out. See what we got. I'd appreciate it. Tell them Cujo sent you when you come on over. Tabletop Dungeoneers Discord group. All right, guys. 
And that is going to wrap it up. I'm going to see you next time. Later.